Okay, the glue is pretty much dry now. Uh, I went ahead and, and dried it with a uh, heat gun. And uh, what that does is it cuts down the drying time from about 20 minutes to like 3 minutes, 3 to 5 minutes. So I'm going to continue right now. There's still some spots where the glue is not completely dry. But you can see how transparent it is. And uh, right now it's dry enough to hold down that thread. So I'm going to remove this thread in front of those marks. There's some uh, pencil marks on here where I'm that'll guide me to where I want the wrapping to be here and also on the back here. All of this other membrane and thread are going to be removed. I'll show you that. And the reason why I do this is so I can lay down a just a single layer of thread and it'll be nice and flat. Cut back on the quill or on the uh, membrane. Being careful, I don't cut into the arrow. I also went ahead and uh, trimmed all of these the same uh, off camera, the backs of the fletching. Okay. A little bit. 
bit more glue. Some glue over the top. Flatten that out as much as possible. So a single layer lay lays pretty flat. It makes it nice uh, when you shoot it, you won't feel that that thread there, or you barely feel it. I don't need to be as neat on the back side. A single layer is fine. I mean, I don't even know how necessary it is once the glue is applied here to wrap the ends, but I just like the way it looks. Okay. So 
So the only step left now is to trim the feathers at the uh, at the at the height that I want. I'll leave that uh, I'll leave that for later. Like well, I can do that. I can do that now. I'll just trim them to make it look more even. I'll probably dress it up later on. Cut it down slightly more. If I think it needs it. just a little neater. I'll decide on the final height uh, later on when I shoot my target arrows. I'm making some target arrows out of this material uh, you know to match it. so when I'm shooting the target arrows I'll, I'll uh, figure out what the, if this is too tall or if it's good height. Okay so that's pretty much it for the fletchings on these I've got some other arrows that I did uh, before. I'll show you the fletchings on those. The cool thing about Titebond is it's transparent or fairly transparent. It's got a little bit of yellowish tint to it, but you can paint the shaftman and then apply the glue right over the top of the paint. And it still looks pretty good. It will yellow if you have a white uh, color on the shaft it will make it yellow but other than that it's, it's transparent and uh, another cool thing is you can add pigments to the tight bond like here I added uh, lamp black and uh, a brown dye to the uh, to the tight bond before I brushed it on and that's what it looks like. This is to imitate the uh, pine tar, I mean not pine tar, but the birch tar that was used on uh, arrows in Europe that during the Neolithic times at least. Uh, and um, it kind of saves some time too because I fletched these in the same way that, that you just saw and all I did was brush on this pigmented glue so it looks like uh, the uh, birch tar okay and uh, I'll get into making these types of arrows these are what I call self arrows which is just a single piece of wood all the way through there's no four shafts or anything and these are dogwood I'll get into making these type of arrows in, a, in another video. Okay, that's it.